please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Hi, welcome to Overdrive. You're watching the show with me, Sohini Dat. Now, we've had a very busy week and of course, we have a very packed show lined up for you. So, let's start off with an Italian route. Now, Ducati has got its first ever road-going four-cylinder engine in the Panigale V4 and that is the most powerful sports bike today. So, Shumi went to a MotoGP track in Valencia to experience it. Today is finally the day. We're at the Valencia MotoGP circuit and we're going to ride this. We have an hour and 10 minutes on the new Ducati Panigale V4 and there is so much to talk about. Let's get going. The Ducati Panigale V4 is brand new for 2018. The Desmo Sedici Stradale, its MotoGP derived 1100cc V4 engine came first and therefore it got a lot of attention. But then again, a 214 PS sport bike engine deserves the attention, right? That's the new V4 engine that Ducati have put in. It's still a 90 degree engine. It's canted back and canting it back allows the swing arm pivot to move forward. And Ducati, of course, continue to use the engine as a stressed member of the frame. So the front frame, the subframe and the suspension swing arm, everything mounts to the engine. But of course, Ducati has worked hard on the engine. It shares the board with the MotoGP bike, which allows a lot of ideas and technology to transfer easily. But it's also a small engine, smaller in every dimension than the older 90 degree twin, except for a 5 cm wider span between the engine cases. At just 2.2 kilos heavier than the twin, the V4 is a massive achievement. The engine is used to make most of the frame as well. The monocoque is retired in favour of the aluminium front frame. You need to think of that as half a twin spa frame which bolts to the front of the crankcase and the front of the rear cylinder bank. The rear cylinder bank also provides the place to mount the subframe on which you sit and the extra long swing arm mounts to the back of the crankcases. That's a very spare chassis if you think about it. In terms of ergonomics, they haven't really done much. They took the old bike, kept the handlebar more or less at the same place, raised the foot pegs 10mm higher to give it a little bit more lean angle capability. But the feel is dramatically different from the old bike. It feels smaller, it feels compact, and somehow Ducati shoved in a V4 engine into this while keeping the feel of the V twin intact. I'm surprised and slightly blown away. And on the move, the engineering begins to translate with breathtaking fidelity into the real world. The engine makes over 100 Newton meters from 7000 RPM onwards and that means I could ride slower than full pace without fuss as I figured out the complex and extremely physical Valencia circuit. And yet, down the straight, the V4S will storm past 280 km an hour with authority, feeling strident but not stressed even the least bit. The new lean angle sensitive quick shifter works well and the engine is just so easy to use and yet it produces such an immense amount of thrust so easily. But on its own, the engine would be lost. But the chassis is just as stunning. The Olin semi-active suspension is enormously capable and has been tuned really rather well. At no point was I allowed to think that the motorcycle had anything less than perfect suspension for every situation. That was true from the slow and fumbly opening laps to the handful of fast laps that I was satisfied with at the end of the day. The suspension adapts live within the parameters of the selected riding mode but you can also change the way it works with you mid-corner, on the brakes and under acceleration. And that's just one of the Panigale V4's galaxy of electronic systems. The IMU allows the Panigale V4 to understand very accurately what's really going on and that unlocks a whole bunch of systems that Ducati uses very interestingly. You constantly hear references to the idea that a new sports bike guy could use these systems, rely on them to do things that he would ordinarily not have the skill to do. Like for example, he'd be able to slide the motorcycle with a safety net. But when you take it to one level higher, so for example from traction level uh, 3 to 2, then you suddenly unlock a whole bunch of systems that are designed for an advanced rider to use even more of the performance of the motorcycle. It's really quite mind-boggling because 
all of the systems talk not about safety as a primary, but performance as a primary goal. You cannot close this story without a hat tip to the outstanding Brembo Stilema calipers which are almost telepathic in their ability to slow the rampant V4 and to the outrageously grippy Super Corsa tyres that were specially developed by Pirelli for the Panigale V4. I couldn't trip them up whether I rode well or like a buffoon and I believe that covers nearly the whole spectrum of riding ability. Yes? So that's the new Panigale V4. Ducati have really taken it to another level and it's not just about the fact that it's a V4 or the fact that it has a lot more power than before. Panigale V4 prices in India start at Rs 20.53 lakh X showroom and Ducati India has priced the V4S, this one, at Rs 25.29 lakh X showroom. 20 motorcycles are in the initial lot and deliveries will begin in July. I suspect that the V4S will be hard to ride in India outside the racetrack. But on a racetrack? My God, you'll have so much fun! It's the idea of the motorcycle coming together as a compact, light, friendly motorcycle that I think sports bike riders of lots of skill levels will get to ride. The prices will be out soon uh, and you'll be able to buy one. I think primarily it'll get used at the racetrack and the guys who get this, I think they'll be super happy. Now, retro classic motorcycles never seems to go out of fashion and the latest one to join that range of uh, Triumph Bonneville Classics is of course the Speedmaster. Now, it's a full-fledged cruiser and Abhay rode all the way to sunny California to experience it. The last couple of years have seen Triumph focus extensively on its Bonneville range of retro classic motorcycles which has grown to include as many as six different models today. Of them all, the Bobber has been the most successful one and has done really well for Triumph internationally. The next step of course was to turn the Bobber into full-fledged cruiser motorcycle which is what the new generation Bonneville Speedmaster here is. And given that cruisers are really popular in America, that's exactly where we are. We are in sunny California riding the new generation Triumph Bonneville Speedmaster. The Speedmaster boasts the typical low slung stance cruisers are known for with wide handlebars and forward set foot pegs. It isn't very different to look at from the rest of the Bonnevilles and in fact the Speedmaster draws a lot of inspiration from the Bobber Black's design. It gets a full LED headlight and a fuel tank similar to the rest of the family though the tank looks unique thanks to these distinct looking hand painted coach lines. The split seats and grab rail finished in stainless steel add to its retro feel as do the wire spoke wheels at both ends shot with flat tires. And just like the other Bonnevilles, the Speedmaster also boasts excellent fit finish levels while attention to detail is immaculate and the overall feel is very premium. The last generation Speedmaster, it was powered by a 900cc air-cooled engine which was the same as the previous generation Bonneville's. The new one of course uses the same 1200cc liquid-cooled engine that we've seen on the Bobber previously. This engine has impressed us with its refinement earlier and feels as good on the Speedmaster. And while its bottom end power delivery has always been a delight, Triumph has enhanced the torque curve further to improve performance at low revs. So there is lots of grunt all around. Be it taking off from standstill, while exiting corners or when overtaking at speeds. Triumph has also got the exhaust note spot on. The Speedmaster sounds exactly the way a classic British twin should which adds to the joy of riding this motorcycle on open roads. The Speedmaster feels comfortable to sit on as the stance is well suited to riding long distances. The suspension is firm but not stiff which also helps the bike deal with potholes and undulations rather well. What impressed me even more though was the Speedmaster's confident feel around corners. It feels surprisingly nimble for its size when it comes to changing direction and has a planted feel around corners as well. That said, the low set foot pegs are way too easy to grind and they do limit the bike's cornering abilities. 
It's been almost a full day of riding the new Speedmaster. We've ridden the bike in the hills, around fast switchbacks and on the open American freeways. And I think I am impressed with this motorcycle in terms of what it is as a full-fledged cruiser. It looks nice, it's got the low slung stance of a cruiser. Uh, the 1200cc engine is refined and good on performance both. Now Triumph will be launching this motorcycle around the end of March 2018 in India. And if you like distance riding or cruisers, this is a motorcycle you should look forward to. We brought together the best cars and two-wheelers from 2017 at the Chennai racetrack last month and also had an illustrious list of jurors testing them on various parameters. Lovely surprise from the American car brand to the Indian market. It's simply a mean machine. It's a completely different take on the segment. I really enjoyed the gearbox. Seamless, you know, I, uh, you really can't feel the shift. What do I say about this? I think it's the most underrated car in our country presently. In this year, I can see there's a commuter, there's like an enthusiast segment, uh, there's also a performance segment. Beautiful million dollar looking bike, could buy the head off at any time. It basically takes all the right boxes. The biggest thing about this bike for me is the price. To me, it will be one of the top contenders this year, if not the winner. We'll bring you a live update on all the winners and the prestigious Car of the Year, Motorcycle of the Year and Scooter of the Year award on the 5th of February from the event floor in New Delhi. Keep a track on CNBC TV 18, Facebook, Overdrive Facebook page and our Twitter feeds. Well, that's it then from us on this week's episode of Overdrive. But we have a very busy week coming up as well because the Delhi Auto Expo is just around the corner and we will be bringing you all the live updates from the ground itself. So remember, you have to track our various digital platforms. We will be live on the CNBC TV 18 News channel. We will be live on our various Facebook platforms and, of course, on Twitter. We have teamed up with Twitter India. So you will be able to see our various live uh, updates as well as our analysis also, hashtag AskOD is on right now. You can fire away a lot of questions regarding what you can see at the Auto Expo or you can also send us questions during the Auto Expo and we will get back to you. We'll see you next week. Until then, goodbye and many thanks for watching. <laughs>